Uh, hello everyone. I uh, wanted to continue my World Cup history videos uh, and I wanted to put the 1992 World Cup. Uh, it was called the Benson and Hedges World Cup and it was held in Australia and New Zealand. I mean that's the first World Cup that totally captured my imagination. I had watched the 1987 World Cup but I was only like four years old so this I was like nine years old then. I mean the first time that it was colored clothing was used in uh, World Cup, uh, everyone having their own colors, India blue, uh, South Africa, Pakistan green, and obviously all the teams with their colors. That's when the colored clothing started in World Cups, but it had started even before that. And uh, nine teams played in this World Cup, unlike the other World Cups. I mean, it was Australia, England, West Indies, New Zealand, South Africa, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Zimbabwe. And South Africa's first World Cup after the international ban. And South Africa, their first match against Australia at Sydney, South Africa won. So it was a welcome back to South Africa for in, to international World Cup cricket. And in the uh, World Cup, I mean, New Zealand were in stunning form. I mean, New Zealand won their first seven consecutive matches in the group stages. And New Zealand topped the group in that World Cup. I mean, that's also the first World Cup where all teams played against each other like even today's this world cup that's the first time that was uh, uh, happening and uh, martin crow was the uh, top scorer of the tournament and also the player of the tournament i think he scored around 450 some 50 plus runs and wasim akram was the highest uh, wicket taker with 18 wickets no surprises there it was wasim akram's world cup especially in that finals and uh, there were some uh, close matches in the group stages. I mean, Australia, India lost to Australia by one run. I remember watching that match. It was a revised target. A lot of matches were affected by the rule. And there was a special match as uh, Sri Lanka against Zimbabwe. Sri Lanka chased 313. In those times, I mean, chasing 313 was considered extremely difficult. I'm sure it was one of the first times 300 was chased, uh, was chased in those times. Andy Flower got 100 when Zimbabwe batted, but Sri Lanka batted well second. And Arjuna Ranatunga got 88 not out. But Arvinda De Silva was the captain in that World Cup. Uh, but obviously, 1996, Ranatunga won the World Cup for Sri Lanka. But Arvinda De Silva was the world, uh, captain in that 1992 World Cup. And there was a match, a very lucky match for Pakistan in the group stage when they were playing England. Pakistan were bowled out for just 74 runs. And when England batted, uh, Vaksim Akram took a wicket, but the rain came and it was only 8-9 overs played and suddenly the match was called off and Pakistan got a point from that match. That was very critical considering how Pakistan struggled to get into the semis. Pakistan had lost a lot of matches initially and Pakistan had to win all their last matches to qualify and they did that. Imran Khan calling their team as the corner Tigers and they delivered when it mattered most. And... Uh, in the semi-finals, uh, it was uh, South Africa against England, the second semi-final. And the first semi-finals was Pakistan and New Zealand. And uh, New Zealand, I was saying, had an excellent run in the tournament. They only lost two matches in the entire World Cup and both of them were to Pakistan. They lost the group match to Pakistan and they also lost that semi-final to Pakistan. In the semi-final, uh, Pakistan, New Zealand, I mean, New Zealand batted first and they scored around 260, I think. And batting second, Australia had issues and, sorry, uh, Pakistan had issues, but there was a big partnership between Imran Khan and uh, Javad Miandad. I mean, Imran, uh, Javad Miandad got uh, 50 something runs, uh, and uh, Ramis Raja and Imran Khan got 44 runs each. And Inzamam scored a quick fire 60 runs from just 37 balls. In those times, I mean, that was a high strike rate, and Inzamam was just coming into the world scene announcing himself and that I mean Pakistan won with just uh, one over to spare so it was a very close match if Inzamam hadn't played that quick no, quick fire 37 ball 60 Pakistan probably would have lost that match so Pakistan winning a close one there against New Zealand in the semi-finals and went to the finals the second semi-final was uh, remembered for the wrong reasons I mean everyone probably who watched it or who read it later knows I mean South Africa lost uh, very sad with the rain rule England batted first and Graham Hick got 83 runs and uh, England posted a very good total around 240, 250. 
and south africa batted second i mean andrew hudson got 46 i think and john deros also got 43 and there was a time when the rain came and brian mcmillan i mean one of the best all-rounders who have played the game was batting and dave richardson was also batting the wicket keeper and an able batsman and both of them looked like they were going to get south africa over the line it was like the 13 balls 22 runs i remember and definitely they would have scored the runs i mean they were good batsmen and suddenly the rain rule came and uh, it was a totally uh, strange, strange decision that uh, the umpires made or the uh, ICC made because there wasn't a Duckworth-Lewis system, proper system that time. And it's after that match that the real Duckworth-Lewis system came into effect. And South Africa were asked to score 21 runs of just one ball. I mean, that was a sad state. And I remember Chris Lewis was uh, bowling and he just came... He just took a couple of steps and bowled to Macmillan and he just tapped the ball. I mean, it was a very sad end to the game. South Africa were looking very good. And they would have definitely won that match. So, uh, South Africa losing there. And England and Pakistan went to the finals. And in the, pa- and in the finals, uh, so Pakistan batted first and uh, Imran Khan got 70 runs, 70-odd 70 runs. And uh, formed a 139-run partnership with uh, Mianda, uh, I think he also got a 50. And Insamam again scored a quick fire uh, around 30, 40 runs in that uh, match against England. And pa- uh, Pakistan posted a very good total in those days, of course, to 250. And batting second, I mean, Neil Freyer, brother, I mean, that uh, left handed batsman for England. I used to like him when I was quite young. He was a very uh, one day specialist. And Neil Freyer, brother, got around 63 runs, I think. But uh, Vasim Akram was totally on fire. And, I mean, he bowled and a beauty of a ball to get Ian Botham out, uh, caught behind a ball that went away from Ian Botham, off-cutter for Vasim Akram. And then he got two wickets in two balls that totally changed the battle. Just stage there where England looked like they were going to win. Alan Lamb was batting the South African ball. And Alan Lamb, uh, Vasim Akram took his wicket. And the very next ball, he bowled another beauty. I mean, a ball that pitched outside the off-stump for Chris Lewis. And that ball came back sharply. I mean, like a leg cutter for Vasim Akram and that ball pitched outside off stem and it just came back sharply and it took the stumps off. Two wickets in two balls. He was on a hat-trick actually. And uh, Vasim Akram uh, took three wickets in that match. He also scored around 33 runs in batting first. So it was a very good all-round performance from Vasim Akram and it, that was his World Cup. Everyone remembers Vasim Akram for that World Cup. And Martin Crowe, obviously, a great batsman, had such a good run. It was just sad that New Zealand couldn't make it to the finals. Uh, so Imran Khan winning that Benson and Hedges World Cup. A lot of people remember Imran Khan lifting that World Cup. It, it looked a unique World Cup as well. It was like a mirror, like a, with a round top on that World Cup. Mm-hmm. And Imran Khan and uh, Pakistan, I mean, winning that World Cup. Uh, Akub Javed was notably also in the, that Pakistani winning team. Uh, Vaka Yunus couldn't play because of injury. He wasn't in that World Cup. I mean, if Vaka Yunus was also there, it would have been chaos. Uh, so Pakistan and uh, uh, Pakistan, uh, Imran Khan, I mean, is one of the most inspirational captains I've seen. Uh, he's someone who demands uh, the best performances from his players. And a big credit, like I was saying yesterday about Alan Border grooming Shane Warne. I mean, all credit has to be given to Wasim, uh, Imran Khan for bringing Wasim Akram into the team and for uh, guiding him and being a mentor to uh, Wasim Akram. I mean, Pakistani players hold Imran Khan in great respect and he's done a lot to, for Pakistani cricket. So... Uh, it's not surprising Imran Khan winning that World Cup 92. Alan Border, one of the great captains, winning in 87. Uh, Kapil Dev winning for India in 1983. Then Clive Lloyd winning the World Cups for West Indies in 75 7. And some great captains winning the World Cup. So, anyway, that's a little bit of a flashback history about the 1992 World Cup, uh, which was the first World Cup again played in color clothing. Uh, a lot of people enjoyed that first time seeing that with the white ball. Anyway, that's it from me. Take, take care. Thank you. And God bless you.